Hey guys, I'm Preston. And I'm Krista, and we're two people to travel, eat, and create memorable experiences. And for today's video, we're in Seoul, Seoul, South Korea. So we're here to celebrate Lunar New Year's with family. Now that's finally finished, we have about three days to kill before we fly back to New York. And because we've been here before, we did most of the major tourist attractions. So I have a feeling this time around is going to focus on a lot of good food, Korean eating. That's right, and hopefully discover some new spots you've never tried out before. That's right, so it's our first night. I'm excited, jet lag seeping in, but we're going to stay strong. Can't wait to go out there and see what cool things we can find. All right, let's do this. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. go. We chose the Sotetsu Hotel as our base for a weekend zipping around Seoul, primarily because of its close proximity to Dongdaemun. And with jet lag still on our side, we ventured out below to hit the shimmering neon lit streets. So we're here in Dongdaemun, which is known as the design district located smack in the center of beautiful Seoul. I'm standing in front of what they call DDP, the Dongdaemun Design Plaza, created and architected and designed by the renowned Zaha Hadid. It is an amazing place to come in and immerse yourself in a variety of exhibitions, stores, and just surround yourself with beautiful art inspirations. People call this structure neo-futuristic with its beautiful elongated and curved forms. And overall, it's such a cool place to be. There's so much energy, there's so much people around me. It's surrounded by these massive shopping plazas. And overall, I, you can come here day or night, spend time with friends, spend time with family, or just see what the art world is working on and get some inspiration. After soaking in the futuristic landmark that helped establish Seoul as a world design capital, we heeded DDP's little meaning of dream, design, play to continue our late night foray through the metropolis that never sleeps and seek out an example of Seoul's famed nightlife. I don't know if this is a smart thing to do, but we're going to sample five different types of makgeolli on an empty stomach while jet lagged. Wish us luck! The coolest thing about this place is the different makgeolli that they have come from different regions of Korea, so you can really experience how different parts of the country do their makgeolli. And number two, they also serve food. It ranges everything from like delicious pancakes on top to more savory dishes. They really do everything here, and everything's supposed to pair wonderfully with all the can't go wrong. We have five makgeollis in front of me. There's two unique flavors. One is a champagne makgeolli, and then the last one is a chestnut makgeolli. But first, we have to start all the way up here and then make our way down. Number one. Have you ever had a Japanese yogurt drink katpiko? This is what it tastes like. Oh my god. So makgeolli has a very creamy, rich consistency. I kind of imagine milk that's carbonated, slightly sweet, and then you just add a little bit of like yogurt probiotic flavoring. That's what this tastes like, and it is so good. Number two. It just kind of punches you in the face, which is great for the jet lag. Wow, a lot more like grainy, milky, a little more sour. Makgeolli is purported to have quite a few health benefits because of the lactobacilli probiotic bacteria inside it, so it's good for your gut. Number three. Softer and sweeter. This one has much more of a fruity flavor, kind of like a Korean pear, which is very sweet. Okay, now we're on to the champagne makgeolli, which is number four. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. That is the most effervescent, bubbly makgeolli I've ever had. It's like champagne and makgeolli baby. And then finally, we made it to the chestnut makgeolli. Never had this before. That's amazing. Nice chestnut, nuttiness, sweetness, glory. What the heck? Oh my gosh! It's a creamy chestnut. Oh my god, that's so good. Everything's great. I don't know, guys, if you ever come to this Muckley chip, Muckley house, and you do the sampler, let us know what your favorite Muckley flavor is. Chan! Don't forget when enjoying makgeolli or any Korean liquor for that matter to also order anju, drinking snacks or food that perfectly complements the alcohol. And the time old favorite food pairing for makgeolli is pajeon, Korean pancakes. So of course, we ordered it. Our mushroom pancakes have just come out and I have never seen a Korean pancake this thick before. Oh, it's so thick, it just falls right off because it's so heavy. Put it in the soy sauce. Mm. Wow. Because it's so thick, it's actually a lot more batter than 
other uh, Korean pancakes you might be familiar with. It's almost creamy in a way. So I think they would go really well with makgeolli. Let's have the sour one, which is makgeolli number two. Oh, it actually made makgeolli number two taste much better. That was really sour when I first had it. And it tastes so much more sweet now, adding it with the pancake. So that's a success. So we're, we're in a taxi. Yes. On the way back to the hotel. Yes, right next to the Dongdae Moon Design Plaza. We drank a lot of makgeolli. How do you feel? Oh, uh, I'm nice. To, uh, <laughs> I'm nice and warm and uh, a little bit sleepy from all the delicious makgeolli. <laughs> so we're gonna play it safe. Yeah. Go back home. Mm -hmm. Get an early night. Mm -hmm. And then have a whole day tomorrow. Yes, that's, that's what the we're plan. gonna do. So we'll see you on the next day. KK, are you okay? No. Looks like you're passing out on me. I'm so tired. We're almost there. Okay. Jet lag to Asia is rough, isn't it? Day two, and we're off to the Bukchon Hana village to get some breakfast. Let's go. See all around us traditional Korean homes, which are called Hanuk. And this village is a preserved area where they've maintained these historical homes. And you get to just walk around and imagine what life could have been like hundreds of years ago. With the beautiful traditional architecture of the remaining 900 Hanoks from the Chosen era drawing attention from locals and tourists alike, the neighborhood tends to be bustling with people exploring the narrow and winding alleys, climbing up the steep hills, or visiting the Hanoks that have transformed into cultural centers, shops, guest houses, tea houses, or even restaurants. Wandering around Bukchong Hanuk village early in the morning, we're sort of pressed for food options, but we stumbled across this really adorable little restaurant that serves Korean traditional breakfast. They have tteokguk, which is rice cake soup with marinated beef. Korean comfort food to the max. Wow, you can taste nice beef flavor in there. It's so creamy, it's perfectly seasoned. You don't need to actually add any salt. So they bring this to the table so you can salt it more, but it's perfect. It's so perfectly seasoned. And let me just try the beef and the rice cakes. Beef is super tender. The rice cakes have a nice little bounce. And all of this is only 8,500 won, which is roughly about give or take eight bucks US dollars, which is amazing for two people with free kimchi. Gonna dig into this with KK, and uh, it's gonna be a great start to the day. Tteokguk, mm. which is rice cake soup on a chilly January morning in Seoul, Korea. Can't get better than this. We just had a fantastic breakfast at Bukchong Shikdan, which means Fortune Well Restaurant. And the reason why the restaurant gets its name because very close by is a water well that the Chosun Dynasty kings would drink out of. So it brings a lot of fortune and good luck to all the residents who live around here. What a great story. I love it. So we're here at Chondokung Palace, literally translated as Prospering Virtue or even East Palace here in Seoul. It was built as one of the five grand palaces of the kings of Joseon Dynasty. While building it, they had nature in mind. They have a beautiful secret garden in the back. You can see epic views of the mountains behind me. And coming in here in the early morning, there's nobody here. So it's super peaceful and really soak in. An amazing time to just soak in and absorb the beautiful architecture and history around you. Uh, for two adults, it's about 3,001 per person. So about dollars per person just for the palace. I think it's an extra five dollars to go to the secret garden. So today we're just going to check out the, the palace, hopefully some of the rooms. Uh, but yeah, just walk around, stretch our legs here in Seoul. Just taking a little bit of a break because we're walking along so much this morning. But that means I have a chance to admire the beautifully preserved architecture of these royal palaces. It's just incredible how vibrant green the roofs are and then the pillars of the red building. I'm speechless, they're beautiful. It's just really incredible. And in front of me, I believe it's the throne room where the kings would preside and wait for the countrymen to come and seek their counsel. 
So I'm standing in front of Hui Zhongdang, which is also the king's office and bedchamber. The original was unfortunately destroyed by a fire in 1917 and had been reconstructed in 1920. So another really cool thing to see here. Okay, so we thought we saw the palace, but boy were we mistaken. So after walking past the office and bedchamber, you come across another ticket booth. We have to pay an additional around one US dollar per person to see the palace or an extra five dollars per person to see the secret garden. So to us, we're like, hey, we're here, gotta at least see the palace. So we just got through the gates right now, about to go down these steep, steep, steep stairs, hopefully to actually see the actual palace. Let's see. <laughs> Rebuilt in 1834, these two buildings behind me represent the Queen's residences and there's just endless amount of buildings all around us. I feel like we're in a maze, I'm not sure which way to go. So after walking around, I think it, that there's no like one mass building as the palace. I think all of these individual buildings around me constitute the palatial ground. Could be wrong, but we've been walking around for quite a bit. It is beautiful. But yeah, I think I think that's what this, this museum's all about. But still a really, really good experience, not that expensive. And you can just see all the modern buildings of Seoul outside the palatial gates. So it's really, really cool. I'm just, you know, standing in a bubble of history surrounded by modern Korea. We're walking around another neighborhood that's called Insadong. And it is quite overwhelming with the plethora of options you can choose from for restaurants, bars, and even cafes. And we're trying to find a traditional tea house, and we're getting distracted because there's just so many things to look at. And it's actually kind of hard to navigate these narrow alleyways as well. So let's see if we're gonna find this traditional tea house. If not, we'll go to a coffee shop like this one here. Doesn't look too bad either. We've made it into this part of this tea house, and it's just quite, it's a little bit cramped, but really unique. The walls are covered in different types of graffiti, and you're just surrounded by traditional Korean artifacts, a lot of wood and baskets. It really has a really homey, cozy feeling to it. Our tea's finally arrived, which is just in time, because I'm starting to get a little cold walking around. And I have in front of me Su Jong which is cinnamon bark tea. It costs around $7,500, 7,500 won, which is $7.50 roughly. Let's go give us a try. Deep cinnamon fragrance and flavor with a subtle hint of sweetness in it. That's really good. Uh, we also have an assortment of little snacks in front of us. I don't know what they're called. I can't read Korean, unfortunately. But we have this, this hefty little tea biscuit. It tastes like a um, vanilla cookie that's been deep fried. That's the best way I can describe it. Take a little bite, go for some tea. Mmm, that's so lovely together. All right, I'm excited for mine. I got the Omija tea, also 7,500 won, roughly around $7. It is created from the fruit of the Maxi Moija fruit. And the reason why I got this is apparently it's not, so that, not supposed to have one, two, or even three flavor notes. Five, sweet, salty, hot, bitter, and <laughs> sweet, sour, hot, bitter, and salty, all in one. <laughs> but first off, it's a beautiful color, and they have little pine nuts on top. Oh wow, it's sweet, but not too sweet with a little bit of like sourness to it. I don't really taste the bitterness too much. All around, it's a great tea. I'm a huge fan. Wow, and then, so this is also free. Uh, I'm not sure what these are, but let me grab this guy. Oh, it's almost like hollow inside. Nice, fluffy, sticky, not too sweet either. And I'm gonna have this mochi, so this is made out of rice. Nice and squishy here with a little bit of uh, red bean. So good. Anything rice with tea goes so well together. Omija tea in Korea. Smack dab right in the middle of Insadong, you'll find a three-story shopping complex called Sam Shigil. Inside it, there are about 40 different types of shops that you can explore by walking around a roundabout stairwell. Let's go check it out. We're in the 
main alleyway of Instagram and on either side of the passageway there are a bunch of shops that carry Korean memorabilia, little knickknacks that you can purchase for your friends and family back home so they can get a taste of the visit that you may have had in Seoul. This narrow road represents the main street of the traditional Korean culture, and it used to be the location of the studios of the royal artists of Joseon Dynasty. Now, this main street and its offshoot alleyways are filled with antiques, traditional craft shops, galleries, tea houses, traditional restaurants, and more. After wandering through Intadong, we made our way over to the basement of a corporate office to try one of these Korean street foods we kept on hearing so much about. It's called Egg Drop, where they take two pieces of toast, cut it in half in the middle, stuff it with eggs, cheese, bacon, ham, avocado, and for 4,700 won, you can get an amazing sandwich. And the garlic toast is so fluffy, has a really amazing garlic flavor. The bacon is sweet, slightly salty, really juicy. The American cheese tastes fantastic, but that egg is just so fluffy and gooey. And oh my God, it's so good. I can see why this is a huge hit. After really, really enjoying egg drop, stretching our legs and we just came down the stairs to this, the river Cheonggyecheon here in downtown Seoul. This was part of a massive urban renewal project where the city redeveloped a river that was once here a long time ago. And now it's an amazing place to come, to hang out, enjoy a beautiful day, bring some food or drinks down here if you want with friends. But all in all, it's super cool to have something like this in the middle of a modern city where you can just be one with nature. And if you love water, come down and just take it easy and have a good day. <laughs> to get to where we wanted to visit next, we had to walk through Myeongdong, one of Seoul's primary shopping districts, and well known as a shopping paradise for those in seek of some retail therapy, or a haven for those who want to know what the up-and-coming street food and eateries are like in Seoul. It seems like it's a corn muffin that has an egg baked right into it. When you're in the neighborhood of Myeongdong, which is in central Seoul, you never know what kind of street food you're going to find, and this is something I've never ever seen before. It's cornbread that has an egg stuffed right in the middle of it. For $2 or 2001, this is not bad. It's pretty good. Since we just tried Egg Drop right before, we had to search out its direct competitor, Isaac's Toast, which has over 700 locations in South Korea selling numerous varieties of toast. Time to dig in Isaac's Toast. Here it is. Look at that beauty. Got some eggs, with bacon, and cheese. It looks like it's the kind of thin, chewy bacon, not the crispy ones that you find in America. So one thing about Egg Drop is the garlic one, the bread is soaked in butter. Uh, the bread here, they did apply some butter on it, but it's not as wet as Egg Drop. That's a really good egg sandwich. The biggest difference is the eggs are a little bit less fluffy. They have like an egg padding here, but they add a little extra crunch texture from cabbage, what Egg Drop didn't have. And I think this, you see an orange sauce in here, some sort of sweet sauce. So it's actually kind of like a sweet sandwich. Overall, it tastes really, really good. The egg's fluffy. The bread is nice and fluffy as well, and the bacon is just nice and thin. and goes on easy. For $3, not too shabby. We were still hungry after our toast adventure, so we headed to one of Seoul's largest traditional markets for more Korean street food. So I'm standing here in the center of Nandengmu Market, which is one of Korea's largest traditional markets. And the cool thing about this place is that there's over a thousand vendors selling tens of thousands of items. Whatever you want, most likely you can find here. And make sure that you brush up on your haggling skills because it's totally legit here. But why we're here is not to go shopping for a home or for getting clothes. We're here because this apparently is one of the best places you can get some good Korean street food. So we're on the hunt for some grub. Let's go. In the alleyway near Gate 5, we looked for the entrance to Kalgupsu Alley and spotted a bright yellow poster beckoning us to walk through the plastic curtain entrance into the enchanting noodle paradise. Wow. Oh, no, 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 wait. No, 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 I'm, I'm gonna walk. Look, look, look. look at this, it's all these vendors here. Oh my god, and they're really, really aggressive. 
They're like grabbing my arm, they're like, eat here, eat here. It smells incredible. Like, wow. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, we survived that. <laughs> now we need to find some place to go. We're pissing everybody off. We literally just sat down and we got a plate full of kimchi and some sort of hot soup, but this has been a very stressful experience. It's a small narrow corridor and everyone's yelling at me. I just want to eat. We ordered one order of kalguksu, which was 6,001, about 6 US dollars. And they gave you a free thing of kimchi, free buckwheat, spicy buckwheat noodles already seasoned with egg, which is amazing, and a free soybean soup, all for $6. So great value already. I just hope the taste is as good as the value. Let's mix it all. Oh, okay. If you can see these noodles, you know they're hand pulled. They look completely different from each other. Look at that. Hand pulled noodles. Nice and spongy. Holds on to the soup really, really well. It has a nice little bounce to it. Good stuff. Another reason we came to Namdu Market was in search of the highly addictive sweet street food that we heard so much about yet never had. Hodok is a Korean donut that's filled either with a sweet brown sugar filling or a vegetable glass noodle. It only costs 1,000 won for each, which is a steal. And it's super popular. There's a huge line of people waiting to get these babies. So I'm gonna dig in. Ah. <laughs> ah. Wow. Oh my God. It's so crunchy on the exterior, but really doughy and soft in the interior. Wow, I can see why these are so popular. So I got the savory hot dog, the yummy, delicious Korean donut here with veggies. Time to take a bite, still nice and warm. Hot. Ah, so good, it's so flaky, so light. They put a nice little soy sauce on top, so you got that saltiness, the familiar saltiness that you love, but inside you got that glassy noodles and veggies. I don't know, who's the winner? The sweet, sweet or savory, sweet or savory, we'll see. But wow, hot dog out. We walked past the grand and historic Sungyeonmun Gate, or South Great Gate, and continued west to a part of Seoul we've never been before. I'm standing in front of Solo 7017, which is Seoul's very own High Line. As New Yorkers, we love the High Line and its urban walkway and park in Chelsea. And when we heard that there was something just like it in Korea, we had to come check it out. They completely built a massive urban garden and a public park on top of a formal overpass. And now it's a beautiful, beautiful walkway with epic views of Seoul with over 24,000 trees, shrubs, and flowers right in the middle of a downtown modern city. So we just got to it right now. Can't wait to go, stretch our legs, burn off the little hot dog that we just had, and soak in some soul. So we're nearing the end of the High Line and it's just been really, really enjoyable as expected. Considering that it's middle of winter, of course all the trees and shrubs are not out, but I can definitely imagine that on a beautiful night or during a warmer season, this would be such an amazing and epic place to come relax, decompress, and enjoy the sights of the city. So onward and upward, let's go. I'm standing in front of Kwanjang Market, one of our favorite markets here in Seoul. It's over 100 years old and is one of the first permanently established markets open every single day. People come here for their silk, linen, and handmade products, but like the market before, they're also known for some amazing street eats. So we're here for food, obviously. So we're gonna go in and scratch and see what else we can find. We got some kimbap and tteokbokki and sunde. So this kimbap here is a rice roll wrapped in seaweed with a couple of vegetables. They actually call it drug kimbap because it's supposed to be addictingly good. And then they got tteokbokki, which is rice cakes and hot chili sauce, and then blood sausage, Korean street market style. So kimbap is 3,001, tteokbokki 3,001, and sunde is 6,001. So it's a pretty affordable meal for two people. Got a little, got a little pickled radish in there and carrots. Really, really simple. Nice and simple and fresh. Has a good crunch. Mm. Try these. Has a nice little heat, slightly sweet, and the spice kicks in. For three bucks, pretty good. I have never had sundae with the glutinous rice as a filling, so this will be a first. Inappropriate that we're in Guangzhou Market as well. Look at that glutinous rice, blood, and then intestinal lining. Dip it in a little bit of salt. It's really good. It has a very deep, rich, 
already flavor. A little bit of soy sauce mixed in. That's, that's good. And then the lining, it's chewy. Just it kind of it tastes like, imagine you're having an udon noodle, got that kind of texture, just spongy. Mm, really good. Probably the last thing that we're gonna have in Guangzhou Market is pindato, which is mung bean pancake. We see this everywhere in Seoul, and especially here, there are a ton of vendors that sell them. So after many years of never having one, finally gonna do it. We needed two hands to cut this. Oh my gosh, look at that, steaming hot. Dip in a little bit of this onion soy sauce vinaigrette and then pop it in the mouth. Mmm, I don't know if you can hear that, that crunch. Wow, it's so good. We had to get one final thing at Guangzhou Market and that is kwadegi, which is a twisted fried donut covered in sugar. Oh my God, look how fluffy that is. It tastes just like a churro, but more doughy, fluffier, a little bit of a thicker outer fried layer and cinnamon sugar, I don't know, cinnamon sugar crust. It's just so good. My turn with the spirally donut here. Oh my God, get out of the world. It is so fluffy. Koreans do their fried pastries and donuts really well. I'm impressed. This is easily a standout. I'm not even a donut guy either. With a massive food coma and jet lag kicking in, we were about to call it quits for the day and headed towards the direction of Dongnamun Gate back to our hotel. But we stumbled upon a wall. We just stumbled upon, by accident, Hongnyunjimun Gate Park on the way back to the hotel. This is one of the sole remaining remnants of Seoul City Wall on the northern side. And it spans a little over 1.5, 1.6 kilometers. And it's supposed to be a wonderful, wonderful vantage point overlooking the city of Seoul, but also one of the cool parts of history that still exists. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's steep. The sunset's happening right now too, it's absolutely gorgeous. Just keeps on going. Back in the day, this very wall is just used to surround Seoul, so the fact that part of it still exists is really cool. Nice clear evening here in Seoul. Can't beat it. Morning! From Seoul, day three! This is our second and last full day here in Seoul. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was kind of funny because we came back to the hotel just to rest, but as soon as we got in, back into the room, we flopped on the bed and just passed Pass out from the jet lag. Oh my gosh, and our feet were hurting so much, so yeah, our bodies are just exhausted. But today we woke up early, we still have a lot more things we want to check yes, out. Yes, we do. We're hungry, so we're gonna kick off our day with some good food. So we're here in Flavors Restaurant here at JW Marriott, south of River in Seoul. It's the number one rated restaurant according to TripAdvisor and instead of being a regular a la carte, it's a buffet, but like upscale, amazing Korean buffet. This is the Korean food section. So how flavor works is that every part of the buffet has different areas go to different cuisines from around the world. It's over Chinese here. Chinese food over here. Stir fry, shallow bao, dumpling. This is the omelet station. So you can make your own omelet depending on whatever you're in the mood for. The American breakfast section with bacon, potato, croquettes. The piece de resistance is the parfait enclosed glass shelf. It's so beautiful just to look at. Per person for breakfast, it's about 59,000 won, about $60 per person. Uh, if you come here for lunch or dinner, the selections vary widely, so you definitely have to come and experience breakfast, lunch, and dinner when you're here. Since we got there right when they opened, our meal consisted of breakfast foods from around the world. First, we had a plate of Korean food, then we moved on to our American plate, and then Krista enjoyed a build-your-own noodle soup, build-your-own omelet, 
vibrant fruit plate, overflowing pastry plate, and a cup of flavors famous mocha to top it off. All right, well, I think we did a great job attacking the assortment of foods that they have of flavors. It was a lot of fun, and highly recommend checking it out if you're ever in Seoul, Korea. So after the wonderful buffet at JW Marriott Flavors Restaurant, I'm standing in front of Coex, which is one of Asia's largest underground shopping mall, which is really, really cool. There's so many things to do here, so many things to buy and eat here, and you can honestly just spend a whole day here if you wanted to. It's Saturday morning, it literally just opened, so it's actually really nice and peaceful because once it starts ramping up, it gets overwhelming with people all around you. So we're gonna go and we're actually not gonna explore the mall because there's too many things to do. There's one thing in particular that we really love, and we're gonna show it to you next. This is absolutely amazing. Look how high the ceilings are. So if you actually enter in the ground level, there's actually not that many things to do here because keep in mind, this is a massive underground mall. So here's an escalator going down. Time to enter and experience it all. <laughs> Let's see what this underground mall is all about. Wow, so you can immediately see like all the stores around us. And last time we were here, it was absolutely packed. One of our favorite places here in the Coex Mall is the Starfield Library. As you can see, this is absolutely gorgeous. The walls are made out of just massive bookshelves. It's gorgeously designed. You got a beautiful ornament in the middle, and it's just a really great haven to be in the middle of a busy city like Seoul. You got comfortable couches, you got AC, you got power outlets, you got hundreds, apparently you got over 50,000 titles here in this one facility, which is really great. So it's a great place to hang out, to relax. If you're in the mood for reading, get some coffee, this place would be it. And considering it's in the morning and relatively peaceful and quiet, I think this is the perfect time to come and enjoy this beautiful place here in Seoul, Korea. We've made our way over to Common Ground in Kongkuk University neighborhood in the eastern part of Seoul. And we're here because this is the first and largest shipping container mall in the world. There are over 200 shipping containers that make up different shops that feature designs from up and coming fashion designers. And you can also get some amazing food here as well. So we're gonna go check out and see what all the hype is all about. Look at all this. This is so cool. sort of like a maze. Oh, I wonder where this leads. We go up. So the first floor, you have your fashion accessories, fancy living. Second floor, more fashion accessories, design goods. And the third floor, you have a terrace market, restaurants, dessert cafe. An outdoor terrace market, and this is where all the food is. When they said that there are 200 shipping containers, I couldn't really imagine what that looked like. It is so much bigger than what you would think. Like, there is a square, a plaza right in the middle of a common ground shopping area. And there's three levels of shops that you can explore. And there's food on the third level, the outdoor terrace. This is so neat. And another way you go to the common ground, you'll find a market hall. And it's you'll find a variety of established brands like Timberland, Dr. Martens, Head, Umbro, etc. So if you love Korean barbecue as much as we do, but you don't want to pay an arm and leg for good quality Hanmu Korean beef, you gotta come to the eastern part of Seoul, Majang Meat Market, where you can get some of the best cuts of meat for a fraction of the price, and they're supposed to be super fresh on a daily basis. It's our first time here, not sure what to expect, but I just can see an endless aisle of premium meat menders, and I'm crossing my fingers to hope that this will be a good experience. Another thing that we learned about this meat market is it's one of the cleanest and well-operated meat butchering facilities in Seoul. As you walk in, you just get hit with like a wave just meaty ironness, which is very, very interesting, uh, kind of an acquired smell to get used to. And what I'm seeing with all these vendors is they're all similar uh, in the sense that they all showcase amazing, beautiful cuts of meat in the front. And you can choose all the different Hanmu beefs by different parts of the cow and different ratings. From one plus plus being the most expensive premium luxury to one, two, three, which is more affordable. Honestly, like just looking at the meats, they all look fantastic, you can't go wrong. So we're just gonna walk a little bit more, find a vendor, and try to find some good beef to munch on. So they sell really great beef, really good pork, and some vendors, you see this, it's like the intestines, and tripe, and inner stomach linings, and it gives me the heebie-jeebies. 
So like any market here in Korea, what we've realized, it is so overwhelming with all the options. What we're gonna do, what we've done in the past, and what we have done in this trip is find the vendor with as many people as possible, with pictures of celebrities or someone famous on it, and pray that it's good. And try not to die at the same time, oh my god. <laughs> so motorcycles and cars are everywhere. So you can get what one types of meat or cut, you know, you can get a combo plate like that. But look at the beautiful red color and the marbling. So at this, you buy the meat and then you can pay a 6,001 extra per person to go upstairs to cook the meat and enjoy it. Whoa. Going up these stairs. Whoa, it smells like Korean barbecue in here. The first two cuts of meat have just been placed on the grill. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. I'm salivating, look at the fat marbles. It's amazing. Three seconds. Three seconds each side. Anything more, you're gonna ruin it. Uh, cool. He works with the beef vendor, and he's been so amazingly kind, and he's actually helping us make the beef. Oh, so good. We got a Hanwu tenderloin for free. Oh my goodness. Here we go. A little, little bit of sokum. Uh, okay, so Just a little bit of salt. Here we go, ready? Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> it's amazing. The fat and the juice just gush out from the fat. And it's so freaking tender, it's like butter. Can't order beef with a little bit of soju. It is early in the day, but hey, when in Korean so you gotta live it up a little bit. A little bit of soju, which is Korean hard liquor, very similar to vodka, but it goes so well with beef. Cheers to Seoul, Korea, Majang Meat Market. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Now we're gonna dig into the tenderloin. I thought the first piece was good, but this is like biting into a fluffy beef pillow. Good job, Korea. Let's give it a little flip. Oh. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my god. Get your scissors. Oh, just like butter. It cuts so easily. Oh my goodness. Anjang Market. Thank you so much for a wonderful experience. Final cut of Hangwoo beef. Here we go. The softest, fattiest cut of beef I have ever had. Just been a phenomenal experience here. Happily we're done. I'm so sad, but we will definitely be coming back when we're back in Seoul. We took a taxi back to Gangnam, and like after all great meals, we wanted to walk it off by taking the scenic route through Garusugil to the famous Galleria West department store. Except, as usual, we got lost and that didn't happen. Despite multiple wrong turns and almost giving up, we finally made it and came across the Pekwajam or department store with its distinct, unique exterior. We've made it now to Gourmet 494, which is located in the basement of Galleria West, which is a humongous luxury department store. And we came here because we heard that they have an assortment of delicious desserts, but I did not know they had something I was really looking forward to, which is called souffle pancakes at Flippers. These pancakes are about three to four inches thick. When you open them up, they're supposed to be soft and airy like angels. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tuck into it and try it. Okay, look at that. Wow. Oh. That is so fluffy. You don't even need to chew. It's just gonna melt in your mouth. <sighs> I am so happy. For 18,001, you get three pancakes, a lot of whipped cream, and fresh fruit. Bring me a lot of joy and happiness. <laughs> So we finally made it to Dior, but we're not here to shop for clothes or purses. It's for surprise. Let's go check it out. <laughs> so we are on the fifth floor of the Dior house. And the reason why we're here is they have a really awesome cafe with amazing desserts, tea, and coffee. When you come here when it's a little bit warmer, they actually open the outdoor patio, but because it's cold, it's only indoors. But this is a great way to relax on the luxury street of Gangnam.
Look at what we got. This is the Saint Honoré, about $30. But it has green pear, chocolate mousse, shoe cream, and a puff pastry. So I don't know how I'm gonna eat this. Oh, it's hard. What's happening? So the chocolate mousse is really nice and fluffy and creamy and milky. And the pastries are really nice to eat. It has a light flakiness. Pretty good. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's not, not going to fit. Really rich, exquisite. Melange of flavors. You have the sweetness from the poached pear. Really creamy, dark chocolate flavor in the cream. And the puff pastry is super flaky, but then the shoe pastry is nice and crunchy, so there's a really great blend of texture so you get to play with it in your mouth. I'm gonna have some tea with it to help the creaminess go down. Oh, that's so good. After stuffing our faces and getting a proper sugar high, we wanted to end our last full night exploring Gangnam's nightlife. And not too far from Cafe Dior happens to be one of the best bars in all of Asia. So, unfortunately last night, because of jet lag, we cut the night short, but tonight, our last night here, it's not gonna happen, so we are checking out Seoul's nightlife here in Gangnam in front of Alice, supposedly one of the top bars, not only in Korea, but all in Asia. Is it only fitting to say? Down the rabbit hole we go. Let's check it out. Immediately, such a cool entrance, wow. Ooh. And it keeps on going. Oh my goodness, look at this. We just ordered cocktails and they just came out, but look at the presentation. Mine's in that box and I can already smell something coming out of it. Look, there's like smoke here. Oh my God, holy shamoli. Oh my God, whoa. That is so nice. Smokiness, chocolate, velvety. That is so, so, so good. I have a cocktail that's called the Birds and the Bees, which is a take on the Bees Knees. It is a basil infused gin mixed with pineapple and honey, and it has a topping of IPA foam. It's so refreshing. Can't really taste the honey, but the IPA foam, it's so creamy. After you've tried your cocktail and while you're sipping on it, don't forget to take a look at the individual cocktail comics that come with each of them. You can learn about the story behind each cocktail. Hello. So we're walking away from Alice and we just realized another really highly rated bar called La Chamber is in the same block. So we're feeling pretty great. Last night, might as well check it out. So we just walked into this room here and it's super tiny. And all we see is a bookshelf, but on the other side of the bookshelf, we hear a lot of noise. Can it be a secret wall? Press and find the book titled The Chamber. The Chamber. What? This might take a while, guys. I'm sorry. What? Oh, here we go. Ready? Press. Pressing right now. Hi, I didn't say, how are you? What's the coolest entrance to a bar ever, but sadly, there's no spots for us. We're back in this room waiting patiently for God knows how long, but still really, really cool. Because it was so busy, the only available seats were in the far corner of the bar. As it was super cramped, dark, and loud, sadly, the only footage we were able to capture was us enjoying the cocktails. I got the Soul Sour and KK got the Laughing Buddha. All right, so we just finished from La Chamber. Not a bad bar, but we were actually surprised to find out that they charged us 20,000 won per person for a cover charge, really making our total bill a lot higher than expected. So we were pretty disappointed about that. Cocktails were okay, but the ambiance was a lot noisier and a lot more hectic than Alice. So if we had to choose out of the two, Alice by far is our preference. 
But overall, still a great night. Wrapping up this last full day here in Seoul. We have half day tomorrow. Hopefully we have a couple more hours to still have a little more fun before our flight. So, time to catch a taxi. And that's how it's done. 안녕하세요. Hello. Can we go uh, Duta? We're in Duta right now here in Tongdemo. You really can't go wrong with any of these shopping plazas, but Duta historically have been our favorites. So we always come here. When you come here, you could also haggle, but I know times are changing and a lot of places you can't haggle anymore. But when you come into one of these establishments, it is quite an experience. So when you come in here, you can buy almost everything your heart desires at a fraction of the price because we're here in Asia. So whatever you want from furniture to leather goods to sh clothes to shoes to glasses, you can find it here. If you can't find it here, check out the other shopping classes. I'm sure they'll have what you're looking for. It's pretty cool. Just when you think they were missing food, we found the food court. I love coming to Asian food courts because not only do you get overwhelmed with tons of variety, but it's so cheap here. You can get all the stews for like 7,000 won, which is about seven bucks. You get a full set for like nine bucks, 12 bucks, 11 bucks. Amazing prices. You got cheese on cutlet, you got brown sauce on cutlet, you got salad on cutlet. Rice on cutlet, everything on cutlet. Man, it's making me hungry. So one thing I forgot to mention is when we come to Duta, we always love to get glasses here because buying glasses in Korea is like unlike anything we've ever experienced. You can pick a frame, you can do an eye exam, and you can purchase it and walk it out same day with only a matter of a couple hours, which is completely unheard of. So trying to find our favorite vendor, hopefully he or she exists still. frames are ridiculously high quality. They range from like 10 to 50 bucks. The lenses range from 30 to 90 bucks. So KK and I both found glasses that we liked. New frames, new lenses, but with the ridiculous amount of sales going on right now and a free eye exam, we're walking away with two new pair of glasses with new lenses, all for under $160, which is insane. And kick it off, the glasses only take 30 minutes to get ready, which is completely unheard of. So it's an amazing experience. They have scratch resistant, anti-glitter, blue light resistance, everything else. And you're walking out a little bit more fashionable. Good morning. It's a new day, new morning. Got the new specs that we picked up from Duta the night before. While we're sad to leave Seoul, we're excited to try a Korean breakfast this morning to conclude our visit to this beautiful city. And then afterwards, we'll see how many things we can do until we have to head off to the airport in the afternoon. We're here at the Shinsun Solongtang place here at Myeongdong. It's packed. We got here at nine o'clock and there's a massive line. So when you come here, make sure you come early. So I am properly excited about this. We got the special Solongtang, which is the special oxbone soup for 13,000 won. Comes with unlimited kimchi. Got three dumplings for 4,000 won each. Rice, free barley water. All in all, great value. Let's try the soup. Let's dig in. The soup looks so great. This is exactly what you want to see. Nice fatty layer on top and nice cloudy broth. Oh yeah, that is so nice. Really nicely seasoned. You can really get the nice broth, beef broth flavor uh, here in the soup. And it's just perfect for a cold morning like this. So what you gotta do is get one scoop of rice like so, dip it in like so. Oh yeah, oh my god. Great morning, last day here. It's gonna be a good meal. Look at these dumplings, they're so big. I think they're traditional like meat dumplings. Ooh, it has nice little glass noodles in there. Some, I think that's pork, a little bit of veggies. Dip it in the soy sauce with a little bit of mustard that they come in, just like this. Mm. The outer dough is really thin, so you bite into that really fast, then you get into that nice, meaty, familiar, yummy, yummy, yummy bite that you get here. It's perfect. Glass noodles is great touch. The scallions are a great touch. The soy sauce mustard, fantastic. Wow, I wish we got more of these. 
literally right around the corner from where we just had so long tongue, we've made it over to Myeongdong Kyocha, which specializes in hand cut knife noodles called kaguksu. It's recommended by the Michelin Bib Gourmand category as high quality and very affordable food. So we cannot wait to try this because there are massive lines in order to get here. We've made it right at opening and just cannot wait to dig into this warm noodle soup. We ordered here the kaguksu and a serving of the mandu. 10,000 won for the mandu, 9,000 won for the kaguksu. Super cheap, affordable, but is it as tasty as it's purported to be? Let's find out. Get that soup broth first. Oh my God. It has a um, chive, onion, umami, slightly peppery flavor to it. Really refreshing and also like deep. Ooh, look at these knife cut noodles. Okay, right, I'm gonna try to eat this all in one go. Oh, it failed. <laughs> the really long noodles. But super slippery, slimy, but that's the way I love noodles. It is so tender and soft. You don't need to chew it. it just kind of dissolves in your mouth but all at the same time. They have little wontons in the soup. Ooh, that's so cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, the traditional chive, cabbage, and pork filling in there. That's yummy. Next up, gotta get into the mandu. Look how cute they are. Dip, dip, dip in the soy sauce vinegar. Mm. The wrapping is so thin. And the filling, that shape, that round shape, that is how much filling there is. They are not messing around. Oh man, I'm just so good. I'm so happy. After about spilling breakfast, we had to get a little cafe to pick us up, so we hightailed it to the west side of Seoul to the up and coming neighborhood of Yongdangdong. Here we're at the cafe, eponymously named Cafe Yongdang, where we had to try some of their cafe lattes in a very unique setting. All around us, it looks like we're in a line drawing or a comic book where all the furniture is outlined in thick black paint. And it's just really interesting being in here. It's kind of surreal. But we had to try, again, the cafe latte with salted caramel, which is 6,000 won, and their number one cake, the green tea triangle with the red bean filling. Really lovely hazelnut coffee flavor. Oh, and just look at that teacup. It's so cute too. And then next, green tea triangle cake. I'm gonna remove this. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful green color, red bean. Mm. <laughs> no. I can't eat that piece, okay? Let's try that again. Okay, let's put it in my mouth before I drop it again. Wow, that cream filling is so light and airy. You'd think because of the red bean, it'd be thick and pasty, but it's not. Complete opposite. You have to make it out here into this cafe. The food is great. Coffee's great and this ambiance is unbelievable. So we just finished naming on delicious coffee and cakes. And we're walking around here at Yeonnam neighborhood here in Seoul, which we just discovered is one of the city's hippest and trendiest neighborhoods where young people, designers, and great professionals from all over come here to live here. And walking around, you see really, really cool things, especially something like this, vibrantly colored walls that surround the boutique stores and restaurants you see everywhere. Another really fun attraction around the Yeonnam neighborhood here in Seoul is this Kyunggui Lion Forest Park where it's completely lined with these beautiful trees and it's an open narrow parkway roughly 6.3 kilometers long where you can come get a great workout or relax in the middle of a busy city. Sadly because it's winter a lot of the trees are sleeping and hibernating but we were told you come here when it's warmer, when they bloom it's supposed to be absolutely gorgeous. So if you come here during spring, fall or summer and the trees are out, let us know. And since we had about two hours before our scheduled taxi service to the airport, of course, we went looking for more food.
Ah, the moment has arrived. This is our last meal before we go to the airport. Here we're at Pyongyang Myeonok, located in Dongdaemun, which is a really popular North Korean restaurant that apparently serves some of the finest Pyongyang cold buckwheat noodle soup. It's been run by three generations and recommended by Michelin Guide and has great ratings and reviews online. So gotta come and check it out. It came with free kimchi, ordered one bottle of beer, which is our favorite. And as you can see, it looks beautiful. You got the noodles here, uh, you got the beautiful cold broth that's crystal clear and it's garnished with vegetables, meat, and egg. Ooh, time to dig in. In Korea, it's all about using scissors for everything. So I'm gonna do a couple big slices like that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, gotta try the broth. Here we go. Oh my god, it's so refreshing with a nice beef meat flavor. You know, traditionally, this is something that you want to have when it's really, really hot outside. But it's February, it's winter time, we're freezing out, but we don't care. We appreciate good food all year round. Let's try a little bit of noodles. Oh yeah, here we go, ready? Nice, spongy, bouncy, grabs onto the broth really, really well. Eat it together with some of this radish. Oh, nice, light, cold, crisp meal. North Korea, doing one thing right. My turn to try Pyongyang Nengmyeong. Look at this buckwheat noodle. Beautiful color. For 12,001, this is probably the closest experience you can get to trying North Korean noodles in Seoul. We thought that our meal at Pyongyang Myeonok would be the last thing we did in our trip to Seoul, but we still have an hour to kill before we need to get to the airport, and I have a craving for something sweet, so we'll let you know what we're going up to next. Our next destination is Old Ferry Donut, possibly one of the best donut shops in all of Seoul, located in Hanumdong, directly north of the Han River and located in the eastern section of the greater Seoul city. We got what we came for, but we have to rush back to the hotel so we can make it for our taxi to catch our plane so we can go back home. Taxi. Hello. Okay. We made it back to our hotel with a little bit of time to try the donuts before we catch our taxi. And I cannot wait to dig in into this. <laughs> what is this? Matcha glaze, matcha glaze donut from Old Fairy Donuts in Hanandong. Oh my God. This is my favorite type of donut. Fluffy, yeasty donut. Glaze on the top is excellent, but the best part is that matcha cream right in the center. Oh, and the fluffiness is so good, and the fried exterior is just right, what, exactly what you want from a donut. Oh my god, I'm so happy we made it and got Old Fairy Donuts. In my hand, I'm holding the creme brulee. First thing I noticed is look how thick it is. These are legit donuts. I mean, look at the size. This is my face for reference and scale. These are, these are pretty big. Oh, it's so airy, so fluffy. The cream is not too sweet. Reminds me of a Dunkin' Donuts Boston cream. But instead of the chocolate, you get a nice, crispy, sugar caramel glaze on top. Amazing end to a whirlwind trip in Seoul. Sadly, our trip to Seoul must come to an end. We had such an amazing time. It was a whirlwind adventure. And despite only having two and a half days here, we did over 30 new things. It's incredible, all the things that we've done. Although from our experience, we had three main highlights that we wanted to point out. The first one are the fried dough pastries that we had from Hotok Korean pancakes that are stuffed with cinnamon sugar to the kwabegi, which is a twisted donut with cinnamon sugar on the exterior, and then the old fairy donut that we just had moments earlier. Oh, love them. So good. So good. And number two, if you love meat, especially Korean barbecue, you have to go to Majang Meat Market. If you want the best cuts of beef at an amazing, insane value, you have to go. It was some of the best beef I've ever had, not in Korea, but in my life. Absolutely. And also, if you want to experience some of Seoul nightlife, we highly recommend checking out 
Alice Chongdam in the Gangnam neighborhood. Their Alice in Wonderland theme was super fun. Their cocktails were world class, but what really resonated with us was the team. They were super hospitable, very nice and engaging, and they just made us feel at home. Absolutely. Shout out to Willie, Demi, and Jinyu. Thank you so much for a great evening with you guys. And if you've ever been to Seoul before, please let us know some of your favorite activities, the things to do or things to eat, so that we know and keep them in mind for next time we visit. Thank you so much again. Time to catch our plane, but we appreciate you all. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell so you know when the next video drops. And we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye, Bye Onara! Hi, Seoul. This was fun. Until next time. We're at the airport and we're finally heading back home.